Hi guys! Okay, so you saw in the opening that we are painting this cute little bunny with an egg-shaped body for Easter. This is your Dashing Doors second quarter, box number six. This is your March door hanger display, or it can move in to um, be displayed in April as well, part of April, because Easter is in April this year. So let's get started. Um, I've set out the paints that I'm going to use. Those are listed on your instruction sheet. Of course, you choose any color paints that you want to use. And um, you can also, if you don't have the same color, you just another color that's similar. All right, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, you have your ribbon supply bag with your um, jute and your zip ties. And you'll have a template that says Happy Easter. And then you also will have, of course, your, your wooden Easter guy. And here are the paints I'm going to use. I'm going to use white. Now I'm using Americana white only because that was what was closest to me. I'm using an Apple Barrel Key West. So this is kind of like a greenish color. So kind of like a sea green. Any sea green you have will be fine. I am also using Apple Barrel Aqua Sky. So this one is a little bit more of an aqua color. So like a blue green. I'm going to use Apple Barrel Lavender Sachet. Um, you can use any color lavender or if you don't have lavender, just take purple and mix um, a little tiny bit of purple with white and you'll get a lavender. I'm using Pink Parfait by Apple Barrel and I am using um, Poodle Skirt Pink by Americana, Deco Art Americana. Now, if you don't have two different pinks, just take any pink that you have and you'll mix white with one um, with it to get your lighter shade of pink. Okay, so just two pinks. My paint selection will change slightly. I will add in a black paint and I did not end up liking the lighter color lavender that I had selected. So I went with a purple and mixed in a little bit of white to get a lighter lavender shade that I preferred. Now remember, you do not have to use these colors. You don't even have to use the same shade of colors. You can totally change to whatever color you would like to paint. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint my ears and my two paws or my feet white. I'm not gonna paint the big egg white um, just cause I don't wanna take all that extra time to do that. Um, that is going to be painted the Key West color. All right, so I am going to start with an angle brush. I'm going to use a number 10 today and I'm just gonna put some white paint onto a paper plate or a styrofoam tray you can use your pizza box if you like, whatever. Now I'm not putting the paint directly on my wood project because I'm only painting the feet and the ears. So when it comes time to paint my egg, I'll probably just put my paint right on there. I'm gonna paint right over the score lines. Not gonna worry about that. And we're gonna do two coats. We're gonna let it dry in between. But by the time we make our way around to both of the ears, that's probably gonna be dry. So we're just gonna keep on trucking, okay? Um, now, if you don't want a white bunny, you could paint a gray bunny, um, his feet, whatever you wanna do, totally up to you. The, the paw pads, so you could see in the picture on your instruction, are going to be pink but it's just as easy to paint right over top of that so I don't have to spend extra time going around that scored line all right we'll move over to the other one and once again you're going to do your ears and then you'll come back and you'll start a second coat on them. All right, so we'll be back when our second coats are dry. Okay, so our second 
second coat of paint is dry on our bunny feet and our bunny ears. And um, now we are going to use the biggest angle brush that you have. It's probably a 12, um, but whatever size that you, that you have, that is the biggest size that you have, that's what you're gonna use. And we're going to outline around the feet and the ears for the egg part of it, so the bunny part. And to do that, I'm going to use Key West. Now you're also gonna want your one inch flat brush for your fill, okay? So I'm just gonna take my angle brush and my Key West paint or my whatever green or whatever color you wanna use and I am going to just paint along those ears. Make sure you pick up all those bumpers. You don't want any lines of paint left over by your brush. Pick those all up. Same on this guy. Okay, so now you're going to take your one inch filler brush that's this brush here and you are going to paint the rest of that egg. <clears throat> dry but because I'm using such a big brush that holds quite a bit of paint um, I am just trying to work out whatever paint I have left in my brush I would rather work the paint out either on a napkin or on my project than put that straight into the water cup because you don't need all that excess paint in the water cup so we're gonna let that dry, but while that dries, we're gonna come in with our darker, or I'm sorry, our lighter pink paint, and we're gonna paint the insides of the pads of our feet and the insides of our ears. We're gonna use the lighter pink first because we're gonna put some pink, darker pink stripes over top of it, and by using the lighter pink first, the darker pink will cover easier than the lighter pink would cover over the dark. Okay, so um, I'm going to use an angle brush again. Um, I am going to use a number six brush, a number six angle brush, and my light pink paint. Now remember, if you only have one shade of pink, that's just fine. Get yourself, um, decide which, you know, if you want the one color pink that you have to be your light or your dark, and then if you want it to be your light, you can add a little bit of red and you can make a little bit darker pink. And then if you want it to be a little lighter, like if you want that to be your dark pink and you want a lighter pink, you can add white to it, okay? So you don't have to have every color paint under the sun. And now I'm just gonna use that um, number six angle brush and my light pink paint and I am going to paint the inside of the ear. Just follow those score lines that Melissa puts on here for you. And we're gonna put one coat on and let it dry.
Now we are going to add a little bit of black outline to this, either with a paint marker or black paint, which I did not talk about black paint in the beginning because I just figured we would be using a paint marker. But as I started painting this, I started thinking that I think I might want some gray in my bunny ears. So we'll have to add a black to our paint lineup. Which by the time you see this, that will be in the instruction sheet, but just not in the front of the video. It is freezing in the studio today. It is a Friday in December as I am painting this. And it's mid-morning. But I don't like the heater running because it's so loud. So I'm sucking it up. But it is very cold in here. That's why you see that I have a sweatshirt on and I keep pulling it up so I don't get my sleeves in my paint. But I have to have a sweatshirt on because it's so cold. <laughs> I may be drinking hot chocolate. And it's pretty early. Like I said, it's mid-morning. I didn't even finish my coffee. You can hear my coffee over here. But I was cold, so I made hot chocolate. All right. And on to our second little foot. Now, while we wait for the pink pads to dry, we're going to go back and put another coat on our body just because I don't want to waste time by going and drying the pink and then painting another coat. We're just going to keep moving. We'll paint the body while the pink dries and then we'll come back and get the pink. Okay, there's our pink. Right. Now we're gonna move back over to our egg and we are gonna put a second coat on. And same as we did the first time, we're just gonna use our number 12 angle brush and we are going to trace around or paint around the feet and the ears and then we'll use our flat one inch brush to fill it in. Just like that. All right, now remember, you're gonna to wanna to go around each of the feet and each of the ears with your angle brush, picking up any bumpers of paint there, smooth those all out, and then fill that area in the center in with your flat white, um, your flat one inch brush. And then go back and put a second coat of pink on the pads of the feet and the inner ears. All right, and then we'll be back to do the next step. Okay, so all of our second coats are on and we are ready to go. Um, two things are gonna happen. One, we're gonna add stripes to the pads of the feet and the inner part of the ears. And then we're also gonna add big old polka dots to the Easter egg body of our bunny. So I'm going to take some of my body paint, which was the Key West, and I'm going to add some white to it. Now you're gonna need quite a bit of paint here because I am using the largest foam dauber that I have, which is about a two inch dauber. Now you can make this any shade that you want it to be. I want mine to be fairly light. So I am going to add quite a bit of white and a lot less green. You're gonna want a piece of scrap paper, 
because if you did the other tutorials for the first quarter, you saw how we used scrap paper to prevent the dot from getting on other um, parts of our of our um, bunny piece, okay, or our project. Um, I'm just using the foam brush to get out the excess paint of my paintbrush before I clean my paintbrush off. Um, okay, so that's the shade that I mixed up. It's quite a bit lighter. I'm gonna go ahead and do my dots first. So when we put our dots on, dots are generally done in a triangle. That's kind of how you know where to place your dots. Um, I have my Happy Easter template. No, I don't want to use that. Let me get a scrap piece of paper. Okay. So I'm going to put a dot right here is where I'm going to start my first one. I'm just going to cover up his foot with my scrap piece of paper. And I'm going to make sure that my foam dauber has paint in it. There we go. And I'm going to put my first dot here. Now I'm going to come over top of the foot a bit because I don't want the full dot to be in his body. I just want like a little portion. I'm going to push down and I'm going to give it a quarter turn. That's my dot. And then I'm going to look and I don't have it covered quite the way I want it. So I'm just going to come back in a little bit. Okay. And there we go. Now you can see that my paper, of course, isn't the shape of my foot there, right? So I've got to fill that in a little bit. Um, I'm just going to take one of the smallest brushes that I have and just grab a little bit of that paint. And I'm going to come in and just fill that in. Okay. I'm gonna keep that brush handy. I am going to clean it out real quick because I don't want it to dry like that. But I'm gonna keep it handy because I'm probably gonna need it again. Okay, remember what I said. Now we do these in triangles, right? Groups of three. So here we go. I'm gonna come over to here. This is gonna be in my second one. And then I'm going to go ahead and come over here for my third. And there's my group of three. Now I'm gonna build off of this for my next one. That's where that guy's gonna go. I don't like the bubbles in the paint, so I try to twist it again to get those out. All right, so now we've got these two. We need a triangle formed with those. I'm gonna do this. And then these two need their triangle, which is gonna put us here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my paper again and cover the foot. And I'm gonna come down here and put this dot in. And I push my paper over a little far on that one. Do better than that, guys. Don't be a, don't be a rookie like me here. Now I have to paint closer. Okay, so there's that triangle. Now one, two, three, that's gonna put us pretty close into his ear there. We could get that, I'm not gonna worry about that one. One, two, three, same with this one, but I am gonna put one on this guy here. So let's just cover his ear with our paper and get some paint on our sponge and go right here. two, three, puts us over, one, two, three, puts us in about this corner here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. And 
I'm just gonna put it right, can you see that? My hand's gonna cover it, but I'm gonna go right in the corner. And just like that. Okay, there we go. Now all of our dots are taken care of. And you're just gonna clean that foam brush out because you're not gonna use that anymore. All right, now we're gonna come in and we are going to do the stripes on the pads of our feet. Now we're gonna do that with our darker pink. Now remember, if you do not have a dark pink, that is okay. Take your whatever your light pink was, get some of that on your tray. I already have some on my tray. And you could just add a little bit of red to that and that will darken your pink up just a little bit of red, okay? You can always add more, you can't take away hard to lighten up a dark color than it is to lighten up um a, it's <laughs> than it is to darken a color okay so it's easier to darken it harder to lighten it all right so I am going to use a number six rounded brush, a number six rounded brush. Now you can use an angle brush if you would prefer, but I am going to use this guy. I'm gonna take my darker pink paint and to each of the paw pads, um, the top, like the little toe pads, I am going to just do a swipe around the right edge. Just a swipe around the right edge. Now there's no right or wrong. Don't stress it. Now the only thing you don't want is a bunch of paint and it's easy to get a lot of paint in here. So make sure you pick up those bumpers, okay? Just a swipe along that right edge. Now for the pad itself, I'm going to draw a line across. Now these will need two coats. So don't worry if you don't get a full coverage there, you'll have to come back with another coat. Just try to get it as straight as you can. Don't measure it all out with a ruler or anything crazy like that. We want this to be fun, not stressful. So there's my, there's one paw. We're gonna come and do the other one. Okay, again, we're gonna take the toes and we're gonna do an outside edge. This time we're going on the other side. And then we're going to come down to the pad and we're going to do a line across each one. Probably about four lines, okay? Now I'm just going whatever the width of my brush is. Just like that. You can see I got a little bit more space between those two than, than that one there, but that's okay. It's all right. And then I'm going to come up to the bunny insides of the ears. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do little stripes across them. Now, let's see. How am I going to do these strips? I got to look at this guy for a second. Let me see. Do I want... Yes, okay. So I want the stripes to kind of be straight with the door hanger, not with the ear. So I'm gonna do it like this, okay. Do that. So it's kind of on a diagonal to the center of the ear piece. And there we go. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. Okay, 
Now we're gonna let this dry and we're gonna come back and we're gonna do a second coat of all those dark pinks. Okay, so our first coat's dry. Now we're gonna work in our second coat. Now these stripes do not have to be perfect, so don't stress them. Just gonna come in and put my second coat on. now on our ear we are going to do the outside edge as well so just on one side and okay, we're gonna swipe down swipe down now we're gonna do that to the paws on the bottom the pads as well and we won't be putting a second coat on that. Not on that single swipe there. Okay. Second coats on our paw pad stripes. easy to get bumpers when you're doing this so make sure you're taking care of those all right so now on these paw pads we're going to do a swipe of the darker pink on the outside edge just halfway around all right we're going to do the same thing on this guy we're going to go on the outside edge All right, and then that's it. Now that's gonna dry. All right, let that dry. And then we're gonna move on to all the little detail work. And I'm gonna test your limits in just a minute. Okay, we're back. And you can see my bunny is upside down because I wanna be able to work um, at the top of him closest to me because it just makes it easier. Now, you can choose to do this part or not. It's up to you. I really want to add some flowers to the top of his head, but I wanna hand paint them. So I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm just gonna draw in some little flowers, okay? So all I'm gonna do is do like a curvy circle, basically. Um, or you could do like half circles. That's, I guess, more of um, what it is. It's like half circles to make a flower, okay? So I'm gonna start about down here. I want it to be about two and a half inches. So I'm just gonna do just some, see how they're kind of half circles? Let's see, let me lower the camera so you can see. Oops, sorry guys. Okay, you see that half circles? And I'm just gonna draw a bunch of half circles with my pencil. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the same thing. Bunch of half circles, slightly smaller. And then I'm gonna do it one more time even smaller okay you can see they're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination all right so now we have five flowers 
No, it doesn't look like much. Okay, and we already have some paint on our tray. We're gonna add in that little bit of purple we talked about earlier using. And we're gonna add in that aqua sky color, that aqua green color that we talked about when we started the video as well. Okay, so I've got all of my different paints on my paint palette. And I'm just gonna grab one of my finer brushes doesn't matter if it's a liner or a rounded brush or an angle brush. Just grab one of your finer ones. We're talking about a size four or a size five. Pretty much a size four or size five and any brush that you grab will work out just fine. You might end up using a couple of brushes in this. Um, now I've got all, I've got all of my paint on my paint tray. You might want to have some other colors handy just in case. Um, I know I showed you in the beginning what colors we were going to use. Now that was my plan, but because of this little floral, I might end up changing my mind. So of course that will be indicated on your instruction sheet, but hard to show you in the tutorial because of the way that I record these. You hear my coffee my coffee over here. I had to, it's, it's now, it's now about nine o'clock at night. I am just now coming back to the tutorial on this because my phone ba battery wouldn't stay charged earlier this morning when I was here doing this. And so I'm back in the studio to try and finish it up. All right. Um, it's cold and now it's snowing. It is December. Okay, so all of my paints are on my little styrofoam tray. I'll show them to you. I added a purple in there, a dark purple. I got my light purple. I got my two shades of pink. I got some white, and then I got that aqua color. Um, we can use whatever colors you want. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint all the flowers pink, um, the lighter shade of pink. Now, I realize that I'm most likely going to have to have two coats of this light pink to cover that green. Ideally, I would not. Um, I'm hoping that I'm not going to have to do two coats, but I'm lying to myself because I know just by these first few strokes, I'm going to have to. In order to get rid of the bumpers of paint, you have to smooth that paint around. And painting this lightish pink over top of that green isn't gonna work out to only have one coat. So I'm being realistic and just know that I'm gonna have to do two. And yeah, you're gonna end up covering your paint or your pencil marks from one where one flower meets the next because we are painting all these with that base coat of the light pink. You'll be okay. I promise you can do this. All I'm doing is I'm just making like half circles, semi-circles, just like when we drew the flowers out. These aren't fancy flowers. These are squiggly line flowers. So right now this is in my head and I'm not sure if the way it turns out is going to be the way that it was in my head because once again, at this moment of this recording, I have no idea how this bunny turned out. No clue. All I can do is work from the picture that's in my head. Maybe the picture in your head of what your bunny is going to look like is not the same as my bunny, and that's fantastic. I want you guys to do whatever you want to do with your bunny, with every door hanger that you paint with us. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna come over here and get this last flower. And then I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna get my flowers dry real quick under the dryer because I wanna be able to just keep moving on this. So here's what mine looks like. All right, just looks like a big old blob. It's okay, it's gonna come together, I promise. I mean, I'm going to pause the video. I'm gonna go dry this, I'm gonna put a second coat on. You do the same thing and meet me back here. Okay, we're back. Two coats on that pink flower set up here and it's dry. So now we're going to take same size brush. Remember, you want a five. Doesn't matter if it's a, a liner or a angle or a rounded. Makes no difference. Might want a couple brushes. Now I'm just going to start putting color in this flowers, these flowers. Remember, you've got one center flower. You've got two along the side and then two smaller ones, okay? And I'm just going to make squiggly lines. We're not going to make this hard. There's going to be a lot of, of the darker pink in this guy. So I'm going to come with my liner brush, my smaller brush, and I'm just gonna make half circles and maybe some squiggles. See that? Let me show you that up close. You can see that pretty well on the screen, but see I just did a little squiggle. I'm gonna keep doing it. And we're gonna go round and round in this flower until, until we filled it in with a bunch of squiggles of color. Now, I'm not gonna do second coats on this. That's why it was important that that first coat of pink or that first color of pink was filled in really well because I don't want to have to do a second coat, all right? So make sure you got nice, fine, pronounced lines. I'm gonna come in just a little bit. I'm not gonna do a complete circle. I'm just gonna do some squiggles in random spots. And I'm gonna come in again and do a couple more. All right, so that's it for the pink on that guy. I'm gonna come over to this one. And I'm going to do this guy. Remember, we've got two sets of flowers here. And same thing on the other side. You see, I'm getting a pretty pronounced outline. And then I'm gonna come into the center and get some squiggles in the center. And I'm gonna move over to my smallest ones. And I'm gonna do the same thing. And you can see I'm not overthinking this, guys. Don't overthink it. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush and dry my brush real quick. And I'm gonna pick up, I don't like how dark my purple is and I don't like how light my light purple is. So I'm gonna mix the two colors together. Let me show you. This is too dark for this sign. This is pretty light. I might have a lighter shade in my pink heart here somewhere, a medium shade, but this works just fine. Let's just mix those two together to get a color we want. There we go. I'll probably use both this middle shade and the light shade, but for now we're gonna start with the middle shade. 
I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna make some squiggles. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for the purple. Now I am going to grab that aqua color. And same thing, we're just going to come in here. There's no right or wrong. I did not wait for all my paint to dry. Just put color wherever you think your flowers need some color. Now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put a little white in there. You see, I'm overlapping them. All right, I think that looks pretty darn good. All right, so we have to let that dry. But as far as like heavy painting, that is it. We are now going to come in with either a liner brush and some black paint or a paint marker. I'm going to use a, both um, a paint marker in black and a paint marker in white. And then we're going to put the Happy Easter on. Now, I really want my Happy Easter to be done in white. Um, I don't really want a dark, dark color on that. Uh, so I think I'm just going to use either a white, white liner brush and, and paint or a white paint marker. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet how that's all going to go down. Uh, what I do know is I have to get this dry. So I'm going to get this dry and then we're going to come back. Okay, so um, before we do any paint marker, I decided that I'm going to go ahead and put my Happy Easter on there. And you're going to need your carbon paper for that. And once again, I just use scraps of carbon paper, but you have 
um, a whole sheet that you can use. Your carbon paper can be used over and over and over again. So I just save mine. Now I don't want to put a whole lot of pressure on this carbon paper because we've got a nice light green um, painting and if I rub too much that black graphite will get um, onto my beautiful sign and I don't want that to happen so I am going to not press down on that too much. Now one thing I do have to figure out here is where to put this because I want to paint it white. I don't want I don't want to paint it a color. You can paint it any color you want. I don't want to paint it a color. Um, and I don't like, I'm gonna cut mine apart because I don't like how it's spaced out. Um, if I only do it the way that it comes off across on the printout, then my happy is gonna be covering my flowers and my Easter is gonna be over top of my feet. And I don't want my Easter over top of my feet because I want to paint my Easter white. And then that will just blend in with my feet. So I'm going to put the Easter, that Easter there. And I'm going to have to see how I can make happy fit. I will probably condense this down for you guys. So by the time you guys get this, it's going to be a little bit smaller. So you go, don't run into these issues. When I designed this, I didn't plan on putting these flowers up here. But then, you know, well, best laid plans, right? So that's what happens when you make plans. Um, yeah. So I got to make it fit. No matter what, my H is gonna overlap my E. I can't get around it. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna roll with it. I will make sure that your guys' is made just a little bit smaller so you don't run into these issues. I don't want you to have to deal with that and overthink it too much um, like I am right now. Remember what I always say, always say don't overthink it, right? All right, so you need your embosser or your scribe whatever you call it, and or a pencil or um, just something with a nice end that you can trace. And go ahead and trace your Easter on. Once again, by the time you guys are doing this, your happy Easter will be made smaller, made to fit, so you don't have to worry about cutting it apart and trying to make it fit. Alright, before you pull it all off, hold up uh, one side at a time and make sure you got everything. It's uh, very easy to lose track of what you've done. Hold your hand down on the other side and lift up on the other side as well. Make sure you got it all traced. Alright, so there is my transfer for my Easter. And now we're going to get our happy in here. Our happy may not line up exactly where we intended it to go because I've got to make it fit. Yep, we're going to put it right there and see what happens. Now yours will be similar, just not exact. Just keep that in mind. All right. That ended up working out okay. Not bad. Not bad for having to improvise and sometimes that happens. All right, so I'm gonna take, and I'm 
gonna fill this in with my white paint marker. And we're gonna see what happens, how white covers over black graphite. Because I don't think I've ever painted with, um, painted a graphite tracing with uh, anything but a black paint marker. So we'll see what happens. We may have to improvise on this as well. Right, so I'm just gonna come in and I'm just gonna trace all these lines. And fill them in as I go. Now, if this doesn't cover, we may have to go back and outline with a black paint marker. We shall see. We're gonna have to put two coats on this anyway, so I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed that it happens, that it works. to now use our paint marker, our black paint marker, and we're gonna add in all of the highlights. All right, so I want to make sure that I define, define some of the flowers up there because they kind of run together a little bit. Um, so I want to make sure that I outline them just a little bit to show to show where one ends and the other begins. And so that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with the flowers. And I want this big one to be the one I start with first. Okay, just like that. I might take and just put a couple little squigglies in here, not very many. All right. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this next one. smaller one. And come over to this side. All right. And that's all for the flowers. I'm not going to do any more of those. I am going to take a paint marker and run it down the sides here and here. Let's see. I am working upside down, but I am going to run my paint marker along both sides of the body of the
the bunny. And I don't care if I'm all the way top to bottom. Not really going for that. I don't care if it's a solid line. I don't care about any of that, okay? I am gonna outline the two sides of the ears where the ears meet the egg, just like that. It's okay that those lines overlap. Don't worry about it. I am gonna trace the outside of the ear and the fold. Now, I might not have this perfectly traced. I might stop. It just, I let my hand do what it wants. And I know that sounds weird, but that's like really how I do it. That looks really good. Um, now let's see, I'm gonna do the feet here. So again, I'm gonna go along the outside of the feet. I don't know if I'll do a solid line. I'm not sure, probably not, but I'm gonna go along the outside. Let me try and make sure I'm in the camera for you. I'm pretty happy with that. I like it. Okay, um, I do want to do one more thing here with the ears, which means I'm going to have to mix up a little bit of paint. Um, I'm just going to take a little bit of black and white, tiny little bit, bit of black, that was way too much, and some white paint. And I'm going to take a, a liner brush, probably around a size five, size five liner brush. A size five liner brush. I'm going to make a little gray. 
I just want to make a really pale gray, which means you just need a tiny, tiny bit of black. Like I said, when I poured it out, that was way too much black. You just really need a drop. That's probably even grayer than I want, but I'm just gonna do it. I want to add like a swoop to the ear, just a swoop. Just like that. Didn't have enough paint on my brush, I had to keep adding. Okay, that's it, that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to add a swoop. I'm gonna just do just a little um, line on each of those ears. Just right there and right there. All right, that's it, that's all I'm doing. All right, now we're gonna put our hanger in and make our cluster and this guy is done. I'm not gonna add any kind of shadowing or um, highlighting to the word. All right, I'm gonna put my hanger in. And again, just like always, each end goes into the hole in the front. And we're gonna bring our ends together decide how long we want that to be. Pinch it and then overhand knot it. And then we're gonna trim the ends and pull the knot to the back side of one of the holes and then even our strands out again. All right, so let's make our cluster. For this cluster, you just got three ribbons. Now you can dovetail the ends if you want, or you can just leave them plain. Um, I think on mine, I'm gonna cut on an angle. An angle, and then I'm gonna cut on the same angle. All right, and then I'm just gonna lay these ribbons in here like this. Decide what I want where. This is how I'm gonna do mine, just like that. I'm gonna wrap a zip tie around all three of them and cinch it closed. As I cinch it, I'm gonna make sure that my zip tie is in the middle and that my ribbons look cute as I tighten it down. I'm gonna slide the other zip tie through that one, tighten it right down, trim off the one that's cinched it all closed and then I'm going to wrap that zip tie around both pieces of my jute on one side and secure it down. Cinch it right closed and trim it. And there we have it. Your finished Easter. All right, thanks guys.